In doing the research looking for what sentiment data could find in Edge, one of the things I explored in the series, and if you haven't watched the series, go and watch that, especially go and watch the very last one, which was uh, part four of the series on how to predict markets, where we actually took a free sentiment indicator and proved using the machine learning model XG Boost that we could find a, high pro a higher probability than 50-50 of market direction. So that was, that was really interesting. However, in doing all that research before, I wanted to really test sentiment data. And so what I did is I took 20 years worth of headline news data from Google. So right now on my screen, you can see Google, I've got Bitcoin punched in here and you can see there's all sorts of headlines and subheadlines. And what I wanted to know is if by using the bag of words, which is a machine learning model that turns words into numbers, if by using this thing called the bag of words, could I actually predict whether tomorrow would be up or down in the markets? Now, I'm going to tell you straight away, the end result was very disappointing. After scraping 20, new, 20 years worth of news data, it was very disappointing. But I still wanted to share how I went and got that data for you because I've seen online that there's a lot of people who, like me, were searching for how do I get all this news data? Where can I get reliable news data? And I actually chose to use Google because it provides all this data. Now, the problem I ran into trying to automate this because I didn't want to go through 20 years and then, you know, select Bitcoin, go to the next page, copy and paste things. I would have been here for 20 years trying to do that. or well, not quite, but you get the point. I wanted to automate it. And so one of the things we used to do that was Python. And so here you can see I've got some Python code over here. Uh, very straightforward. I mean, we're looking at 92 lines of code and there's a lot of spaces in here as well that I came up with in order to actually search this data. Now, one of the problems I came up with was that when going to search this data, that Google would say, ah, no spiders allowed. So I felt like a little bit of a hacker here. I was like, oh, I want the data. I really want the data and I don't want to pay thousands, hundreds, thousands of dollars or whatever it costs to get, you know, good, reliable news data. I wanted to just get it from the major news sites, etc. And I wanted to categorize those. So this is essentially what I ended up scraping. If I go over here to say Bitcoin and I show you what I scraped, I've got the date it was scraped. I've got the headline and I've got the subheadline as well. And you can see these are just words. I was just pulling words from the headline and subheadline. And so this go this data goes back ages and ages and ages and ages and ages. Now, if anybody wants this data, just write to me at admin at cryptowizards.net. I'd be happy to just email you this, this data and maybe you can, you can play with it too. You might find it useful. But the point is, I wanna tell you how I actually ended up getting all this data. Now, the cool thing is with this algorithm is I can literally just go and punch in, you know, Apple or, you know, I don't know, pink elephants. I use that a lot. So I'm gonna say pink elephants. And now what I want to do is to run that data. But the problem is I don't want Google to block me from doing it. So I ended up using a couple of Python libraries to do this. The first library I ended up using was something called Selenium. So Selenium is actually a like a driver tool. What it does is it allows you to open programs or open the browser and make it log in and make it do things as though it was a human. And this was really cool. I even thought about, you know, doing something to see if I can, you know, and let me know what you think of this idea. I had this idea where we could have this essentially Selenium log into Instagram and through using some kind of machine learning uh, chatbot, have conversations with people about crypto wizards and the fact that they were talking to a chatbot, you know, just to, just to, just for fun, just because it's cool. Well, I think it's cool. And so I wanted, I even thought about doing that, but nonetheless, I cut my teeth with Selenium on just starting with the basics. And that is bringing up a browser, getting it to search some, something and going to the next page and getting, you know, two or three pages worth for each date range. And so what I ended up doing here was just putting in a date range and telling it how many dates I wanted to go and search. And you can see here, there's a little bit of code that says, what driver am I using? I'm, I'm using this Chrome driver, et cetera, et cetera. And then if I scroll down, you can see how it knew what text to pull based on the HTML inside the web page. So for those of you who are not techie, if I go here to tools and I go to uh, web developer and page source, this is what 
a computer understands. This is how a computer shows you or a browser shows you and understands what to show you on your screen when you're browsing. So that's essentially what it does. And so what this tool does here in Python is it actually looks for certain, you call it tags, etc., that can allow you to scrape that text. And so that's what this algorithm did. Now, funnily enough, this code isn't working exactly anymore because I, I tried it today and I noticed that Google have actually changed their format somewhat on their news pages, meaning I would have to go in here again. I would have to inspect this. I would have to look at, you know, what exactly are the tags in here for the headlines? And actually Google's made it easier. In fact, I wish it was like this before. So if anything, it's become easier. I just didn't want to have to update the code before this video. So I thought I would record it anyway, but I'm going to show you what it does. So essentially we're going to look at this live. It's going to go and scrape. Now we've put pink elephants as the search term. So I'm going to hit shift and F10. I'm here in PyCharm. PyCharm is a fantastic editor. It's open, opened up the browser and now it's searched pink elephants for me. And now it's skipping through certain date ranges that I've told it to, and it's scraping that data. And so what it's done now is it's created a file called pink elephants. There won't be anything in there right now, because again, like I said, Google's changed the format, but essentially that's what was happening here for all, all these search terms here that I was going through. So markets was a general one where I was searching for just general stock sentiment news. I actually tried this with the Apple stock. Uh, as well. And again, I really got no predictive capability from the machine learning model. Now that might not be because the sentiment wasn't useful. That could just simply be because my coding of using the sentiment data could have been more advanced. I don't know. I thought it was pretty advanced. I, I researched this a lot, but I didn't really get very far. Now, again, if you want to know how sentiment affects the markets, we did actually find what I would call a slight edge in that but look at part four of the how to predict the market series. In fact, it was the very uh, most recent video that I did on this channel. Anyway, I thought you'd find that really, really cool. I'm gonna do one more search just cause I think it's fun. And we're gonna search for something like, I don't know, Ripple. And we're going to hit shift and F10 and it's gonna open up Google. And again, it's gonna go and search for Ripple. And there we go, it's pulling all the news data for Ripple, how cool is that? It's such cool automation. So again, if you want to automate some kind of software using Python, I used Selenium to go and essentially drive the browser and Scrapey for actually pulling the data. And I bought two Udemy courses when they were on sale. I, I don't know how many courses I bought in total now. I've learned so much from Udemy, by the way. This is not a plug. I just, I've learned, there's a lot of cool stuff on there. Um, I did that and I researched YouTube videos, etc., and that enabled me to write this code that essentially went and did that. So let me know what you think. Take care. Talk soon.